Lewis structure of beryllium iodide, BeI2? Well, it's complicated. You might think that beryllium, a metal, and iodine, a nonmetal, would combine to make an ionic compound. But it turns out that the way these two atoms bond together, they end up sharing electrons, so it actually ends up being covalent. I'm going to draw the ionic structure for you first, because I'm guessing it's what your teacher wants, but then we're going to I'm going to show you what it actually is. You know what I mean? All right. So beryllium is in group two of the periodic table. It brings two valence electrons. Iodine is in group 17, the halogens. It brings seven valence electrons with it. So I'm going to draw my beryllium with one, two valence electrons there. I'm going to draw an iodine with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons there. You probably know the octet rule. The octet rule is the idea that each atom wants either no valence electrons left in its outer shell or a full outer shell of eight. So iodine already has seven, just needs to gain one extra electron to have the full outer shell of eight electrons. So beryllium generously donates an electron to the cause. Iodine, this iodine now has eight valence electrons and is happy or stable. But beryllium still has one extra electron in its outer shell. Where does it go? Spoiler alert, another iodine comes in and beryllium can donate its last electron there. That's why you need two iodines to react with one beryllium. What do you end up with here? Well, beryllium had two valence electrons and gave them both away. So it has no valence electrons left and has a charge of plus two, which represents the loss of two electrons. Iodine had seven, gained one each. So that means each of these iodines now has a full outer shell of eight electrons. That's one extra electron compared to what it started with. So it has a charge of minus one. There are two of them, so I got a copy that again on the other side. I just put it on the other side to make it symmetrical. There you go. This is the ionic Lewis structure for beryllium iodide, a metal with a non-metal. It kind of implies that the beryllium's and the iodines are in an ionic lattice together of alternating plus and minus ions. Unfortunately, that ain't true. Instead, beryllium with its two valence electrons will react with the two iodine atoms, seven valence electrons each. And instead of transferring electrons, they're going to share electrons. That's what covalent bonding is all about. This iodine has seven valence electrons. And if these two electrons pair up and spend most of their time in between the two atoms as a bonding pair, Iodine can pretend that it has the full eight. This iodine can pretend if these two electrons pair up with each other. And beryllium is happy with just four valence electrons. It's actually an exception to the octet rule. Boron, beryllium, and lithium are the exceptions to the octet rule. But Boron's happy with six, beryllium's happy with four, lithium's happy with two. I don't know, you were probably just supposed to memorize that. So the final structure here is that beryllium is covalently bonded to a bro oh, not a bromine, that's an iodine atom on the right-hand side. Each of those iodines still has three lone pairs of electrons. You can now see that that iodine has eight electrons around it. One, two, three, four, five, six that definitely belong to it, and the two from the covalent bond between the beryllium and the iodine. And similarly, beryllium can be covalently bonded to iodine in the other direction as well. This is beryllium iodide as a molecular compound. Now, just to complicate things even more, when you actually have solid phase beryllium iodide, the beryllium is bonded to both iodines, and then those iodines are attracted to the beryllium of a different beryllium iodide molecule. These bonds end up all being about the same strength, so it's more like a lattice of covalent bonds. 
I've seen it referred to as a polymer or a network covalent compound similar to diamond or graphite, if you have any idea what I mean by uh, network covalent solid. Anyways, the point is ionic. This is probably what your teacher's looking for because it's a metal with a non-metal. Molecular, this is much closer to what it actually is. And uh, this is what it actually truly is. And it goes infinitely like this in all directions. Uh, you're not expected to know that. I just figured I'd drop a knowledge bomb on you. Best of luck.